Hey y'all, I'm Casey Bell from the Shake Up Learning Show, a part of the Education Podcast Network, just like the show you're listening to now. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Hey, do you need help in becoming more effective at teaching virtual classes? Well, NVTA, the National Virtual Teaching Association, has a semester program that is college accredited and designed to help you become more successful as a virtual teacher. A few of the topics that will be focused on are establishing relationships in the virtual environment, virtual instruction best practices, differentiation in the virtual classroom, and managing virtual resources, among others. NVTA is an affiliate partner with Teaching Learning Leading K-12, and there's so much there to help you be successful in the virtual classroom. Uh, so take a look. Go to my website, stephenmaletto.com slash sponsors, find the NVTA logo, and click on it to take you to their website. Happy learning. Hey, Steve here, and my podcast, Teaching Learning Leading K-12, is hosted on Podbean. If you use my affiliate link when you sign up for podcast hosting, you will get one month free. I've been on Podbean for the whole existence of my podcast since November of 2013. In that time frame, I've had nonstop service. I've had easy access to assistance when I needed help. I've been able to upload unlimited pictures and podcast episodes. The dashboard is easy to use, and my Podbean community has grown tremendously. Looking at starting a podcast? Well, use my affiliate link to get one month free of hosting. Go to my website at stephenmaletto.com slash sponsors and click on the Podbean hosting link to see what plans are offered and choose the one that you like the best. You'll be glad you did. We got a great episode for you today. I got Dale Alexander. He's the founder and president of Alexander and Company, an employee benefit firm focused on the school community. You're going to learn a lot. You're going to hear today about the million dollar wagon. You're going to hear about saving for retirement. And you're going to hear about information for parents to help their children learn about money. Great conversation. You're going to learn so much. Thanks for being here. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the show. Boone Titanium Rings, found on the web at boonrings.com, is an affiliate partner of Teaching Learning Leading K-12. And I'm also a customer. I have this really cool ring that's ca- got these carved pistons and, and stars in it. I love it. They make rings of titanium that are carved, laser cut, and engraved, as well as they have inlays of many types of materials like meteorite, acrylic, wood, carbon fiber, and so many other types. They also have special collections that are incredible designs. One of the top sellers are the Gamer Rings, the Stealth Series, and the Black Zirconium. As a note, they also make earrings, pendants, cufflinks, and for you musicians, they make cool trumpet mouthpieces. Love it. Go to boonrings.com and at checkout, use my code, capital T, capital L, capital L, capital K, number 12, and you'll get 10% off your purchase. So go check them out. I love my ring, and I know that you will love yours. You are listening to Teaching, Learning, Leading K-12, a podcast for educators, helping you help kids achieve their dreams. And now here's Steve with this week's show. Hey, welcome back. Steve here. And today I've got with me Dale Alexander, who is the founder and president of Alexander & Company, an employee benefit firm focused on the school community. Over 80,000 school employees are benefiting from employee benefit services that his firm provides through their client school districts. A certified financial planner, chartered life underwriter, and chartered financial consultant, Dale is a past recipient of the National Employee Benefit Advisor of the Year by Employee Benefit Advisor Magazine. Dale, it's awesome to have you on this on the show today. Say hi to everyone. Hey, everybody. Thank you for having me. Honored to be with you. Well, it's an honor to have you here, and uh, it's cool because I... I've gotten to know you over the years, and uh, it's been a pleasure to know you. And uh, and then uh, you have some really cool stuff to share. That uh, it's funny. All of a sudden, it's like, why didn't I ask him before to talk about stuff like this? I'm just <laughs> grateful that I had something of worth to be on your podcast. I appreciate this. Thank you. Oh well, you're more than welcome, and I'm, I'm just glad you're here because we got uh, you know one of the things that uh, you know I, I got to say this when I when I was a brand new teacher and I was hired, I got out of college, I was hired for my first teaching job. Mm-hmm. They put me in a room. It was in a, uh, in a very large school system. And they put me in a room with probably about 175 other brand new teachers. <laughs> right. And uh, they put somebody at the front of the room and they said, uh, we're now going to talk to you about retirement. <laughs> and, and then they wanted you to fill out forms at the end. I of can the, see where this is going. <laughs> yeah, they, it's went, not good. No, it wasn't. They wanted you to fill out tax forms. <laughs> and they said, we cannot advise you. So, uh, you know, so just uh, good luck. Fill out the forms and then uh, don't leave... Because if you leave, then it might take too long for you to get these forms back to us. We need to get them going now. 
And so, Which, by the way, this is the foundation of your future, your financial future. Exactly. That's why I'm so excited to have you nice. on the show because the message you're about to deliver is so nice. much different than my experience oh, way back then. Yeah. And, you yeah. know, and it's funny because uh, they did this. So what I did was I'm like, I've, I, I think I was 25. All right. Right. And uh, I looked at, uh, I was 24, 25. I'm in that range. And I, I looked at the guy next to me and I said, do you know what to do with this tax form here? And he said, he goes, oh, actually I do. And he goes, he goes, you do this. He goes, how many of you? And I said, well, just my wife and me. And he goes, he goes, okay, this is what you do here. Blah, blah, blah. That's what you do. And oh yeah, you can take these deductions. Yeah. I owe taxes at the end of that year. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Get your life's financial planning from a guy sitting next. Yes, to you. yeah, a guy that I I, right. I know I saw him at least one more time that year <laughs> right. at another county meeting, no but no vested interest was, in you at all. No, none whatsoever. <laughs> so, you know, with that being said, um, <clears throat> Dale, should, we shouldn't get our advice from the guy sitting next to us, should we? Uh, probably not. <laughs> As a CFP, no, probably not. Yeah, I like the. What's funny is I wish you all could see his face that he's making as I was telling no. that story. He's like, oh my gosh, man. Yeah. So I so, hear that all the time. By the way, you do? No, oh, sure. Well, let's talk about, you know, how important this is because, you know, we're going to talk about because it's important for everybody in, in in our world. But at the same time, as a brand new, when you're a kid, I mean, you're not really a kid, but you're a kid. You're 24, 25, 23 years old. Sure. It's kind of hard to imagine the, you know, the down the road and the retiring. You know what they call that future self syndrome? It's literally a financial thing. And and here's here's what that means is picturing yourself 30 or 35 years down the road, you know, why wouldn't people start saving money? It's because it's hard for us to picture ourselves way down the road. In fact, me at 25, thinking of me today at 57, was as random and foreign as passing a stranger on a sidewalk. I mean, if you think about it, why would you ever smoke a cigarette? You were going, you could possibly die a horrible death, but way down the road, right? And I don't care about myself way down the road today. And so it, it's literally a, a, a thing, future self syndrome of why people don't do things today that they know they should do. So we're going to solve some of that today, by the way. That's awesome. Cause that's, you know, that's one of those things that, and, and you're so right. And especially in those days, I mean, in, you know, in, in the early days when you're in your early twenties, you're definitely, you know, you're, you're indestructible, man. Sure. You know, it's <laughs> bulletproof, right? Bulletproof. You sure. don't have to worry about any of that stuff because it's, <clears throat> it's a long way down the road. That's right. Well, you know, and the farther that is, the less we care about it because yes. it doesn't impact us today. Yes. I know there are things that I should do, but I don't because it doesn't affect me today. It's like the homework you do it the night before. I know I should do that two weeks before, but you should just know. It's crazy, isn't it? It is. So Dale, one of the things that you do as a financial advisor, you have this cool presentation and it's called a million dollar wagon. Right. So tell us a little bit about that. So some background i i came up as a as a in the financial planning industry fell in love with the study of what to do with money i just loved it even in college i fell in love with it and so that's not my job our job is managing employee benefits for schools but but what i study is the study of financial services right for years for decades and uh my my mom taught 26 years and my dad was a superintendent for 22 of his 31 years in education so i've had this burden of, of loving educators in my heart. And you, you hear this narrative that, that teaching doesn't pay a big, a big salary. It, 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 you don't make a lot of money teaching. And I knew that was not true. I knew there was something not right in that. And when I started studying this, this million dollar wagon video that's out there, I knew I had to kind of do this project. And here's, here's what this means is, is if you look at the retirement plan, now let's talk about Georgia, which is where we are. Let's talk about the Georgia teacher retirement system. In many states still have what are called defined benefit pension plans. And that's the advantage that many states as educators have. In fact, 84, a defined benefit pension plan is a plan that defines by a formula what benefit you're going to receive in the future. You'll know them as, for example, maybe 2% a year for every year you work times the number of years that you work. So if you work 30 years times 2%, you would get 60% of your final, say, couple of years average salary or highest salaries, something like that. That's a defined benefit pension plan. Well, many states still have those type plans. In, in our state here in Georgia, they still have that plan. 
and it's very rich. It's a very rich plan. Corporations used to have those type plans. You know, you'd retire and get the gold watch and take your pension, right, from many corporations. Well, corporations started getting rid of defined benefit plans and putting in what? 401k plans, which are defined contribution plans. They define what percent and up to how much you can put into a defined contribution plan, like a 401k. And many times those companies will match a percentage of what you put put into that defined contribution plan. But that puts the burden on the employee to save the money that they need to save, okay? And you have to put more money in that. But these states that have defined contribution plans, that's paid mostly by the, the employer, the school. It's a school-sponsored plan. And in, in Georgia, 6% of that's paid by the employee. So I started studying, and I talked to teacher retirement and found out that the average teacher retirement payment from the retirement system, teacher retirement system of Georgia, was $38,000. The average, now that includes teachers that may have taught 15 years and leave, 20 years, 10 years, and they leave, okay? Doesn't even count like administrators, people that have high incomes. So when I saw that number, I knew there was a story here because as a retired Georgia educator, that the average is retiring with a $38,000 pension payment by one of the best retirement plans in the nation. For the average American out there, and by the way, this is an interesting statistic, 84% of the United States no longer has those pension plans. They're on defined contribution plans. So you, many of these states that still have them have something very rare that most of America doesn't have. So if you look at a $38,000 average payment for a Georgia retired teacher, as a financial planner, if you came to me and said, Dale, if I've got this body of money, what percent of this body of money should I take in income each year? Because you want to, don't want to take too much, right? Because you'll eat into principal, and then it'll eventually go away. So you want to kind of take a small amount of a distribution that it, so that it can still grow. Most financial planners would say to take about a 4% distribution. That's a safe amount to take so that it still grows above that and keeps growing and you can still take that for the rest of your life. So with that in mind, to have a body of money that will pay out a 4% distribution to equal $38,000, you would need, you divide $38,000, by 4%, a body of money equal to $950,000. Follow me? So the average American, like me at my, my company here, I have to have $950,000 to equal what the average Georgia retiree walks out of a classroom retired for the rest of their life from their retirement plan. Don't think many people know that. <laughs> and many of the states are richer than, than our Georgia. Our Georgia is 2% a year times the number of years that you work, times the average, I think, two years, average higher salaries. And many of these states still have these plans. So you can look at what you're going to retire at if your state still has a defined benefit pension plan that has that formula. And you can calculate out what your retirement payment is going to be. And if it's that thirty-five to forty thousand dollars, that forty thousand dollar payment, that's a million dollars that you're going to walk away from a school. Now, that's not the story. The story is I went and looked and said, what does the average corporate employee? Because you hear educators don't make any money, right? Right. <laughs> educators don't. You don't make any money being a teacher. Oh, no, 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 no. So then what are these people that go, are going over to the rich corporations? What does their wealth look like? Certainly they have huge amounts of wealth, right? Well, let's look at it. So we took the, the, uh, one of the, the biggest financial institutions in the world, Vanguard. So I went to Vanguard. You can go to Fidelity. You can go to any of these companies and look at the average 401k balances in, in corporate 401ks. Now, consider this, that the average 401k balance from somebody 55 to 64 years old. And that's about when many of our retirees in Georgia are retiring, between 55 and 64. The average 401k balance 
is $197,000. The average. The median, which means half have more and half have less. I always struggle with what that word means, right? Mean, median, mode. But the median, half have more and half have less, is $69,000. And that $197,000, that includes the, the wealthy CEO balances. The reality is it's more like that $69,000 balance in corporate 401ks. And remember, 84% of Americans, that's the only, listen, the only company-sponsored retirement plan that they have. The, the wealth is not there. Even if you made more money in the corporate side, all of that additional income would have to be invested to equal what these Georgia retirees walk out of their school with. It would all have to be invested. Georgia retired educators are 5 to 14 times wealthier than the average corporate employee that leaves corporate America. The wealth is not there. It's a myth. It's not true. At least in Georgia. And if I could find out other states' formulas, I, it's easy, easy to calculate. That's powerful information because, you know, it's, you know, too often what we, we hear is, you know, what you've already said, which is that, you know, because the, the pay is what it is, <laughs> um, it's the, uh, that they're not going to be able to have these uh, decent retirement. And so here, though, the way it's operating in our state um, it's the ex exact opposite. And we aren't, we aren't even talking about the, all of the additional benefits that come with being an educator. Um, for example, in, in education, you can, you can keep your health insurance after retirement. In the corporate world, there's no health insurance guarantee, certainly today. It could change. In Georgia, we get you as an educator get a state subsidy for your retiree health insurance costs. Many of these states listening to this may do the same thing. If available in a corporation, it could certainly change any year. In Georgia and some states, you get cost of living adjustments to your retirement checks. I know in Georgia, we get three, you get 3% 3 cost of living adjustments to your retirement checks. In corporations, nope, doesn't happen like that. Usually, corp, usually school systems have lower benefit plan costs than a corporation. Because think about this. In most counties, the school system is the largest and most stable employer in the county. Think about that. I'm from South Georgia, very small towns. You get a school system that's two or 300 employees where I grew up. That's the largest employer in that county and the most stable, right? So they have lower benefit plan costs. Think about the breaks that educators, I mean, these are, this, this is in addition to the, the retirement benefits. You may have a summer break plus your normal holidays. In corporations, you have your normal vacation days plus those holidays. In schools, you may have two weeks at Christmas. You may have a Thanksgiving break. You may have a spring break. In corporations, you just got your vacation days. In schools, hey, you have the demands of class. And Steve, I understand those are, they're real. That, that's real. But in the corporate world, you have the demands of production and profitability. And those are real as well. You know, tenure can be a protection for the majority of educators. There's really z hardly any tenure protection in corporations. You may have some tenure protection in a, um, um, in a union. In, in education, you have the stability, think about it, the stability of, of the school system. Again, it's usually the largest and most stable employer. In corporations, you've got layoffs, you've got mergers, you've got closure, plant closures. Look at it in a COVID world. Schools didn't lay people off. Most schools didn't lay people off. You may be moved in a corporation to have to go to a different state. You don't have that in education. And here's maybe, maybe the biggest thing in education, you literally get to shape the future, don't you? You literally oh, yeah. get to touch the future. Corporations, eh, not so much. So, I mean, you, 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 if, you, if, you, if you think there's a I, – I, I think the tipping point was a, a, a friend, a, one of my buddies worked at a large school system, and a lady came in one day and said she had 24 years in education and was going to leave and go work for the corporate world like she had missed something. And I went, no, we're going to tell this story because that's, that's, that's a myth. It's not out there. It's not true. So I'd, I'd say, re-look at what you have. 
it's not all perfect on that other side. It's, it's not. Look at what you have. Look at if you have a defined benefit pension plan in your state. Think about that because it's huge. And maybe it puts a different perspective on what you're doing and why you're doing it. And that's awesome because that's, you know, it, when we start off, it's hard to think about retirement. Sure. And, uh, and so you're not really paying attention to what it is that you have, but a big part of what you're talking about is that some, you know, some of those systems have other plans. They have, you know, the different 401ks and such, I'm guessing. Sure. And, uh, um, but the big thing that, uh, what we're talking about today is that there's that, uh, that retirement benefit package that uh, Georgia has, no matter what, for any of the educators that they have to put into and, and their employer You does. bring a good point is in these states that have defined benefit plans, they also have a defined contribution 403B, which is the school's same version of a 401K. They're just for nonprofits, hospitals, churches, schools. It's the same thing. It defines how much you can put. We're not even talking about that contribution which is the only thing corporations have. So if you do money in a 403B, that is over and above what, what I was saying, the million-dollar wagon. By the way, the million-dollar wagon, the, 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 when I say that, and you can, do, you can watch this talk on milliondollarwagon.com. So everybody listen to this can go to milliondollarwagon.com and, uh, and see this talk, milliondollarwagon.com. But the wagon... The visual there was you back your wagon up to your board office and you literally take a million dollar bag of money and put it in there when you're ready to go. And they put your million dollars in your little red radio wagon and you pull that little red radio wagon away from that school with a million dollars equivalent in it. And that doesn't even count what you can do with a 403B. So for 84% of the United States in Georgia, our first million doesn't even count. That's just to keep up. That's just starting out to keep up with a Georgia retired educator. My first million, it doesn't even get me ahead of you. You just throw that out. That, that's, to, that's to equal an educator. But you don't think about that. You don't get taught that. And you forget about that. You can't forget about that. Because the corporate world, it's not there. It's not there. That's wild because, you know, you, you, you're exactly right. I mean, you don't get – I mean, no one – teaches you that as an educator. I mean, and and go back to that scenario, even though my scenario that I told you earlier is from 35 years ago. (laughs) um, I'm not so sure it's that different in a lot of places today where it's not, they just present it this way and say, well, yeah, just, you got to think about your retirement here, fill out this paperwork and let's move on. You know who the financial, this is funny, who the financial planner to many young educators that get these benefit packets and you walk and they're supposed to figure out what to do with all their insurance stuff. The financial planner to many people today is the person up front that these young teachers walk up to and go, Miss Jones, what should I do here? And she goes, well, I'd take this and I'd take this. I'd do a little bit of that and get you some of that right there. And you're letting a, you know, 64 year old do a financial planning for a new teacher. that may be 23 and, but that's, that's how we've built, that's how many places have built the process. It shouldn't be built that way, but that's how many of us get our, get our information. You got that right. And it's, you know, it's scary stuff because uh, what you're really trying to do is fill out the paperwork and get it turned in. That's what, I mean, that's what you're doing when you're in that in processing usually. And that's why you take that advice from whoever will give it to you because you can just kind of fill it out, sign your name and it's gone. Once- now we've got a better way to, I know how to solve some of this stuff, it's, it's fairly easy to solve, but, uh, anyways. <laughs> okay. Now you can't start that and say, and then, and then <laughs> oh, say, right, and then say, right, uh, right, right. Uh, maybe go. I'll tell you. All right. Okay. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a good point. All right. So here's the, here's the point. So just in, there's the insurance side and then there's the retirement side. So let me tell you how, how you can solve the retirement side is if you look at how corporations solved getting people in 401ks. Harvard did a study and showed us that that 80% of people will take the path of least resistance. Think about that. We will, most of us will do the easiest thing. It's escalator versus stairs, right? It's <laughs> lotto versus save money. It's fad food, fast food versus cook, right? Oh, yeah. We yeah. do the easiest thing. So why don't we make the best thing to do 
the easiest thing, and people will do that. So in the school world, if you want people to really retire with lots of money, look at what corporations did with 401ks, and here's what corporations did. They said, Steve, welcome to Acme Co. as as a new employee. So we've put you in a retirement plan called a 401k or in school, 403b. We've put you in this supplemental retirement plan. And we have put you in a portfolio that is, that is allocated in stocks and bonds and you know, cash in a portfolio that is, that is appropriate for your young age. And we've put it at a, at a date out there, and they're called target date funds. It may be 30 years in the future, 25, depending on how old you are and what date out there you want to set it to. We put you in a in a portfolio that is set to basically mature or or wind down for you to retire at, say, 60 or whatever age you want to have. And it's going to be more aggressive early on and it's going to get more conservative as you age. And they're professionally managed and professionally watched. So you put you there. It's the best place to be. And you can automatically put employees in there. You can maybe have it at a 2% or a 3% automatic contribution for you. And if you don't want to do this, you can just opt out anytime. And maybe it increases a percent a year, you know, up to 4 5 6%, and then it stops. But the best thing for you to do, Steve, to retire wealthy is nothing. It's leave. And 80 or 90% of people will stay in that because we want to be financially successful. But most people don't know how to do that. So then if you do it for them and tell them what you've done and the best thing to do is nothing, most people will stay there and just be successful. Make success the easiest thing to do and tell them what you've done, but make it the easiest thing to do. And this magically, people will stay there. And that's what corporations did with 401ks. And we've seen schools, we've built plans that have employees of schools do that and they will stay in these plans so it's really an easy thing to fix no it's cool that's very cool so thanks for sharing rather have sat in that class back then and said you've already been put where you need to be managed by our investment review committee and advisors and they'll 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 take care of this you're with you're in the portfolio you should be in it will get more conservative as you age so when you're ready to retire it will be highly conservative the best thing for you to do is nothing and it's done by professionals you'd have probably gone sign i'm in i'm staying in you would have gotten up and left because you were in the right thing People don't care how this stuff works. All they care about is, am I doing the right thing? That's all people care about. Am I doing the right thing? And that's so, I mean, and you're right. I mean, it's funny because I've moved school systems and I experienced the same sort of thing in each school system, by the way. And it was, it was kind of an interesting aspect of it because if someone would have said, okay, the only advice I can give you is this, what, if you just sign up for this basic package, this is what this was designed for is for you guys in the ages that you are. And this is how it works. And then, you know, over time and so forth, if you want more advice beyond that, you know, we can tell you that this is a good package to sign on to. That's why it was designed for you. If they would have said something like that, you know, every, <laughs> I think you would have had lots more people going, Oh, okay. This is no brainer. And instead you had lots of people going, well, you know, what, what does this mean? And you know, it's, it's kind of funny and, I felt like I was back in uh, basic training because uh, right at the end of basic training, they made you sign a paper, <laughs> put everybody in a room and said, um, all right, we need you all to sign this piece of paper right before we were getting ready to do this big confidence course. And basically the paper said that uh, um, we didn't hold the army responsible Uh-oh. for any accidents that Uh-oh. might happen on the confidence <laughs> Wait course. A Wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> yes. And you're going, and that's, and it was funny because I had the same sort of feeling when you were sitting there that day. It's like, uh, well, if I sign this, this isn't me. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Is something bad going to happen it's here? It's you know? easier to kill me. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So um, interesting stuff. I, I, that would have been so cool if they would have just said, this is designed for you, sign here. If you want more information to see the other packages, then... The uh, easiest thing is the best thing. And Harvard shows us that people will stay in that. And studies we've done in benefits show that that's true too. 80% of us take the path of least resistance. Fascinating stuff. That is so much so. So, so let's shift from uh, talking about uh, the million dollar wagon to talking about saving for retirement. Okay. Um, 
What are your thoughts about that? Because I know a lot of people, you know, in the, in, in the, even, I mean, you know, we're coming out of COVID and all this stuff or whatever your take is on it. <laughs> we're, you know, the world that we're in, I mean, a lot of people, the virus has nothing to do with it. They, you know, they either spend what they're going to spend um, or they might save some or, you know, they see things. And, and with some of the social media, you know, people see those people on social, on, uh, you know, Instagram and stuff like that, that are really killing it, or sure. at least appear, appear uh, to be. They appear. Um, so maybe I could do that too. Um, let's talk about saving for retirement. I mean, what, what do you think people do or don't which, do? Which, by the way, you bring up an interesting point. It's how bad, how bad social media is to us financially, because here's why. You may not think about this, but all you see are people's highlight reels, Right. You ever see people that look bad on social media? Not at Never. all. Never. <laughs> no, and they always, Never. <laughs> they're always driving Jags. They, or, yes, or they Bikinis. have the cleanest cars, the prettiest beaches, the best hair, the greatest dress, the biggest watch. I mean, right? And what do oh, we yeah. do? I got to go there. I got to drive that. I got to wind that. I got to wear that. I mean, it, it, it's, all you see is highlight. And that's not the truth. It's never the truth. Have you ever seen a trailer for a great movie? And you go see the movie, and it's terrible. Yeah, all the time. It's because all you saw was the highlight reel, right? Right. And we have to understand, and I'm, I'm not bashing social, I mean, I'm on social media, but use it to kind of advertise what I want to do for people. But, but, but all you see are highlight reels, and that's not the truth. And it is ruining us financially, relationally. I mean, it, it, in many ways, it, it, you know, emotionally, it's killing us because of the fear of missing out, the fear of you got to keep up, right? And as long as you understand that it's doing that to you and you know how to kind of bounce back at that, then that, that I think helps us all. But back to your question of, of how do we retire better? Is that, was that your question? Yeah. The, just saving for retirement, the idea that, you know, of maybe not sp- Spending everything that we're making, or, or what you know, whatever thoughts you would give us about uh, what we should be doing that maybe we're not. Well, you, you first have to you have to get inside your mar- your financial margin. You have to try and you have to try and get financial margin in your month. And that means spending all the financial planning course we need says spend less than you make for a long time, right? Pretty easy, isn't it? Yes. <laughs> easy to understand. Hard to do. <laughs> right. Easy to understand, right? Spend less than you make for a long time. But you've got to try and get inside financial margin. And, and boy, I hope we'll talk about kids later because i got an idea. Most that. definitely. But, but I'll say the biggest mistake educators make in retiring and saving is way too conservative in their 403B, okay, in their supplemental retirement plans. And certainly, if you have a state-sponsored, remember, defined benefit plan like Georgia has. I mean, that's not going anywhere, Lord willing. That's not going anywhere. So you've got, in, in, in states where you have your pension plan, your defined benefit plan that we talked about earlier, that allows you to be more aggressive in your supplemental 403B, like a 401k, supplemental retirement plans. Unfortunately, those, those supplemental retirement plans were, were built to fail educators because, you know, many times salespeople love to just, you know, promote kind of fixed accounts because they're easier to get people in. They're, they're safe in the sense that if the stock market goes down, you don't lose money. But people, one, a, a class I have with kids, and we talk about, is the stock market risky? Well, if you don't understand the stock market, what's your answer to that? Sure, it's risky. But if you look long-term, the stock market is among the safest places to be. What do you got? You can put it in your mattress, put it in a bank, put it in a bond, put it in the market, put it in real estate, right? Everything has risk to it. Being too safe is risky, right? But when you see educators and where they put their supplemental retirement plans, long term, long term, the stock market is among the safer places to be. Stock market's up two out of three years and up quite a bit more than it's down. Long term, year to year, the stock market is risky. Imagine I'm walking up a flight of stairs and I'm doing a yo-yo while I'm walking up a flight of stairs. That's the, 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 the symbolism of the stock market. 
stair to stair that yo-yos up and down, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. But what's the trajectory of the staircase? It's up. So it's up and down, stair to stair. Floor to floor, not so much. Never has been. Stair to stair, it is. If you go back from 1926 and look at the, the, the history of the stock market, and you put the worst events in world history, Great Depression 1929, World War II, um, the Arab embargo, uh, 9-11, the worst events in, in history, they barely register as blips on the stock market returns since 1926. So anyways, I would say educators just understand short-term, the market is, is, is risky, and long-term, it's less risky, and put more money in mutual fund-type investments. A mutual fund is a, it can be in stocks, it can be in bonds, but it's, it's putting small dollar amounts in hundreds of different types of investments, let's say stocks, managed by professionals that are choosing those companies that they're being invested in. So I can put small 25 a month, 50 a month, small dollar amounts, let professionals manage it and put it in stock type portfolios and get big diversification with it and have much higher growth in those years. And these are hundreds of thousands of dollars difference at retirement. Hundreds of thousands. So I got to I got to ask you, how do you, what advice do you give to somebody to say because I mean you know, when you see something bright, shiny, and new, <laughs> and you're, you're, you know, and let's stay away from cars for a minute. Let's just talk about uh, whether it's houses or whether it's just a, equipment and it's nice, you know, nice whatever, fill Ages, in the blank. Trips. Trips, yeah, there you go. That's stuff like that. Sure. Um, cruises and things like that. How do you delay, how do you get them to, to think about delaying doing some of that? I mean. So, in anything, the vision has to be more powerful than the current. In order to have lasting change in anything, you have to have a passionate discontent combined with a powerful vision. And I mean, you, you, if, if, what I say, you have to be unhappy enough, a passionate discontent. I, I, I hate the current... I hate being in debt. I hate being anxious about money. I hate being broke. And you've got to get mad enough. But being mad enough, you could say, I, I want a better body shape. But if you don't know what you want, a, a passionate discontent, you have to have a powerful vision. You've got to know what's the end game. What do you want? You have to have a vision. If you don't know what you want, you go, why do I want to diet? What do I want out of this? You've got to have an end result in anything to last long. For example, if you go to the doctor and the doctor says, based on your blood work, whatever, if you, if you smoke again or if you take another drink, you're going to die. Well, if you think about those grandbabies, I want to be there for my grandbabies. You have a passionate enough discontent and a powerful enough vision. That's how when people go to a doctor and get some news like that, they can stop doing whatever that day, right? Because the doctor gave them a powerful vision and it was passionate enough, powerful enough to make a change. And if it's not powerful enough, if you're not mad enough and the vision is not, not visible enough, you're not going to last long term. Back to your question of how do you how do you stay away from that stuff? You just got to know what do you want the end result to be. I want to I want to retire early with my spouse. I want to have a life like this. I want to do what I want to do, and that's got to be more powerful than buying the couch or a boat or going on a trip. But you've got to put you've got to build margin financial margin in your life. Otherwise, you're going to be broke, anxious, and frustrated like most Americans are financially. Statistically, yeah, it's it's rough because that's you know it's it, it, I I just there's just something about uh, you know keeping up with the Joneses or like you sure. said uh, fear of missing. By the out. way, the Joneses are broke too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I, which they don't realize because obviously they're they're doing very well because they've looked at their Instagram account. So you know, <laughs> you know. you've just seen the Joneses highlight reels. <laughs> yes, exactly. So good stuff. I mean, because that's that's something that you know, I guess. 
I like to say that no one can make you do. It's pretty hard to make somebody do something. This side of uh, really fear, they have to want to do it, and I guess somewhere they have to be able to figure out that that's something that they want. You know what the the prettiest beach, the best beach, the most powerful beach is. It's knowing you can go to any beach you want to and not really going. It's driving a fast car slowly. <laughs> I like that. Right? Yes. It's driving a, a Lamborghini at 25 miles an hour. I could, but I'm not going to. That's why I, what I want to tell people, build. you have to get inside financial margin because, boy, nothing helps you sleep better at night living inside a budget. And nothing has you sleep worse than living outside of one, right? As Dave Ramsey says, if you live like no one else, the day will come when you'll live like no one else. Isn't that a great quote? It is. It's awesome. If you will live like no one else, the day will come when you will live like no one else. And that is true, live like no one else, because very very few people do it. And it doesn't matter, by the way, you made a comment earlier, it doesn't matter what you make. You could be make $200,000 a year and be stone broke. You can make $30,000 a year and be as rich as anybody else. Everything's relative. It's just what are you used to, what percent are you taking? That's that's so awesome because it's it just it's just a matter of listening to it and, and not listening to the other little voices. <laughs> it's the it's it it comes down to the portion. It comes down to proportion, not portion. Gotcha. Cool stuff. So all right, so we've talked about million dollar wagon. Dot com. Dot com, yes. We've talked so million dollar wagon dot com. We've talked about that. We talked about encouraging people to save for retirement. Yes. So now let's talk about helping parents talk with their kids come about on, money. Come on. Don't, wanna... start, don't crank this engine up. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Okay. This is my greatest passion. This is my greatest love is teaching kids about money. By the way, it's this, this is important that you bring this up because uh, this week I get sent, my finance director sends me an email where the state of Georgia has established that the pers- personal finance instruction is only 26% of the current economics course in high schools. Personal finance only represents a, fit, a fourth of the economics course in high schools today. Well, they are raising that to where personal finance is going to be 51% of that economics course. And I'm always talking to my kids about money, and, and just we're always having this conversation. And our kids the other night were at dinner, and they said, why don't we learn this stuff in high school? We're not learning great things that help us in high school, in, in, li- in real life. Why aren't we learning these things, you know, budgeting and checkbooks? We had a great conversation the other night, credit cards. And well, now George is solving that. Uh, I think Florida is solving that, and I think many states are getting fed up with it. So you're, this is my passion now. And the, one night we were, I was talking to my kids, and my middle child, Grant, says, Dad, why don't you write a lesson and teach all of our friends what you're telling us now? So I did. I wrote this lesson called The Talk About Money, dot com, by the way. The Talk About Money, dot com. And here's, so if you are a parent listening to this, <clears throat> every parent wants a kid with a plan, right? So here's the, the, the biggest it's a 50-minute course. It's called the Talk About Money. And here's the biggest principle of the talk. High schoolers have ahead of them whether they get out of high school and start working or they go to college and then start working. But ahead of them, they're going to go from making basically nothing, would you agree? I mean, part-time, but, but kind of nothing, to making the biggest number when they get their first real job. Yes. They're going to get the biggest number they've ever seen at any point in their life, right? Oh, yeah, definitely. When you get your first real job. So you're going to go from making nothing to some huge number. Now, instead of taking 100% of that new number and spending it, and by the way, the average American doesn't stop at 100% of their paycheck. We blow through that and live on about 105% of it statistically, right? Wow, yes. Right? Yes. We don't even stop at what we make. We have to blow through because we're entitled, right? Because of your highlight reels that you're watching exactly, on social exactly. media. It's the American way, right? Not anymore. We're changing that tonight, today. Okay. Instead of taking 100% of that new money that's the biggest money you've ever seen, 
Take 70% of it. And I want you to save 20%, and I want you to give 10%. Listen, and I don't care who you give it to. Give 10% of it away. And we're going to talk about why would you do that. Save 20, give 10, and live on 70. And listen to this. 70 is still going to be the biggest number you will have ever gotten in your life. You're still going up. You don't have, my friend uh, David Helton said this when I was tell, we were talking about this course. You don't have a standard of living established yet. And whatever number you accept as your standard of living, that becomes your reality. Listen, if you start at 70, which is still the biggest number you will have ever seen, you don't know that 70 is not 100. If you make 70 your 100, that is your 100. You never miss that additional 30 if 70 is what you start out making your 100. Could you imagine, Steve, if from 23 or 18 years old, all of your life, you've lived on nothing more than 70% of every paycheck, right? That would have been nice if I'd been thinking about that. <laughs> and here's, the, here's the, the, the biggest point of the class. They have one shot to get this right. Because if they take three of, I'll, I'll, I'll give them three. If you take three of those paychecks, spending 100% of that paycheck, it's over. You will never be able to back down to 70. It's over. I don't have that chance anymore. It's behind me. It's behind you. It's behind most of these people listening to this. But it's ahead of these kids. They have this moment in time to make that first check. I had a kid in high school. He said, I'm not going to college. I said, what do you want to do? He said, I want to be a plumber. He goes, but I'm going to make 50 my 100. He said, I'm going to start out and make 50% my 100. And he will because it's ahead of him. And whatever number he accepts, that becomes his reality. Now, and then I show in this class a $36,000 starting salary. Let's put the numbers to it, which in Georgia is about a, the starting teacher's salary at one of my school systems. We were talking about this. He said, use $36,000. Okay, $36,000 starting salary. And I'm going to start at age 23 and go to your working life at 67, Social Security. And I'm going to have you living on 70, saving 20, and giving 10. And at 67, listen to me, you've given away 437, given away $437,000, and you have $5.2 million. That's with raise every year, 8% annual return on your investments, less than the stock market historically. Living on 70, saving 20, and giving 10. You give away 437000 and you have $5.2 million, and nobody has $5.2 million today. And by the way, these kids that don't think they're going to start at a $36,000 salary, I go, okay, let me start you at a $12,000 salary. You give away $132,000, and you have $1.7 million at retirement on a $12,000 starting salary. And it's from one decision in their life, at one point in their life, at first paycheck. And listen to this. This is the best part of everything. This decision doesn't care what kind of family you come from. It doesn't care what kind of family legacy was, be was before you, what your parent, what, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what kind of education you get. All that matters is at one moment before you get that first check, you say, I'm going to make 70, my 100 on this check. And for every check the rest of my life, I'm going to live on 70. And you will never know the difference. If from the first one, it's 70. And I close this by saying this to these kids. And I, I've been going around to high schools all over doing this and and these kids are just, there's not a phone in a hand. They're just, for 50 minutes, they just, they're, they're captivated. And I, at the end, I close like this. Everybody look at me. Look at my face. Because somebody is going to say this in 40 years. I know you can't even think about that, which is, you're going to take care of that. I don't even, you don't even need to think about that with this decision. It's taken care of for you. But I want you to remember this moment in time. Because here's what's going to happen. Remember me up here on this stage. 
Because in 40 years, here's what's happening. You're going to be sitting in a backyard. I can see it. Beautiful, lush Bermuda grass. There's a white fence out there. There's a big oak tree with a gorgeous flower bed and pine straw around it. And you're sitting in an Adirondack chair. And there's just kids running, little kids all over the place. And one of them runs over and jumps up in your lap and kind of hurts you. And you go, hey, baby girl. And they go, grandma, grandpa, how, how did you do this? Look at me. And here's what you're going to say. Kids, remember this moment, and you're going to say this. I will never forget. I was in my high school auditorium when I was 18 years old. And this little, short, ball-headed, kind of creepy guy was up on that auditorium stage. And he gave us this brochure, and I've still got it, and I'm going to make copies of it for you all. And by the way, it's on my website. And he gave us this paper, and he said this. If from my first paycheck, I would make 70, my 100. He said everything about my life would change. He said my marriage would be different. My job would be different. My grandchildren would act different. Our vacation. He said everything about my life would change from one decision. And I don't know why, but I believed him. And that, baby girl, is how we have all of this. And some of these kids will say that in 40 years from one moment in time. That's so awesome. It really is. It's, you know, and it's just being able to take and the message that you're delivering and put it into action and how much it can pay off for them and how they want to live their future. So... I mean, that's just, it's incredible. And I can't thank you enough for wanting to spread this, this, uh, this message because, um, you know, we, we talked today about uh, the million dollar wagon, which is the message towards the educators as they're, as they're figuring out what they're going to do for their, their financial planning. We talked about, uh, can't forget about saving for retirement because sure. that's important. And also talked about teaching kids about uh, what they can do that will change their life forever. Uh, that is awesome, Dale. If somebody wants to learn more, where are, you gonna, where are we going to send them? Uh, so start at um, million, uh, um, million Dollar Wagons just for the educators, but uh, thetalkaboutmoney.com. So if you want to watch this with your kids, thetalkaboutmoney.com. Print out the lesson notes that are there. It's that brochure you've got there in front of you. Uh, print those out with your kids. Um, and then below that is called Getting Started. So these kids, I want them to get started in a mutual fund uh, so I, I send them to Fidelity. You can go to Vanguard. You can go to t Repro- You can go to any of these mutual fund companies. I just send people to Fidelity. They've got a great app. But this stuff is not linked to my I, – I don't make anything. I just send you straight to Fidelity. What is a mutual fund? I've got Dave Ramsey articles and Fidelity articles. How do you choose a mutual fund? I'd say mutual fund, don't not stocks, because a mutual fund is safer. You get more diversification with small dollar amounts. And then how do you select a mutual fund? You know, link there on Fidelity to take you how to select. And then open an account. You click there, and you just open you an account at Fidelity. If you're under 18 – Get an adult with you for a gift to minors uh, account. And it, that link is there. Everything is right there under lesson notes. So they can go to that site. That's my speaking site, dalealexander.com. So you can contact me through dalealexander.com and uh, off my speaking site. Excellent. And I'll have that information in the show notes where people can find it easily. So this has been an awesome learning opportunity. And uh, before we close out, I got a couple questions I want to ask you. you got and uh, the first one goes like this. You know, sometimes we got so much stuff going on that we get overwhelmed and we want to quit. How do you keep from quitting? Passionate discontent and a powerful vision. What's your burden? Uh, I said this in a speech last week. My pastor said this. Uh, what's the burden on your heart? What's the thing that has to get solved? What's your biggest burden? And then what are you going to do to solve it? So you've got to be mad enough about something. And then you've got to have a vision of what you want that, that answer to look like. And, uh, you know, so many times we get so complacent and comfortable. Marvin Hagler, former boxer, said it's hard to do road work when you're sleeping on silk sheets. It's hard to do the hard thing and put in the effort when it's comfortable. 
And so you've just got to know what the end result is that you want. And if the end result is important enough, you'll get it done. Love that. Awesome. Uh, Last question, Dale. Do you have a teacher in your past who made a difference in your life? If so, who was it? And what would you say if given the chance to say thank you? Um, First of all, my mom and dad. Mom taught 26 years. Dad was superintendent of 22 of his 31 years. Dad became a superintendent in uh, South Georgia in the first year of integration. His longtime mentor suddenly died, and Dad gets thrust into this highly public position as a 34-year-old kid and state patrolman lined in the top steps of your high school the first day of work. And you've been thrown into this position, asked by your, your city, your board to do this. And my dad made decisions that um, uh, our house was shot. Um, I've seen my mom hang up the phone crying from being cussed out like a dog because my dad made decisions about kids and not race um you know they say character leaves a legacy and we walk in in the the wake of of people of character before us and i'm walking in in my business working with schools i walk in the wake that my father left for me and it's an amazing wake because it could have helped me or hurt me it's amazing to come behind my father in this industry um um, my dad and mom, and uh, outside of them, because most of, hopefully, most of us would say our parents. I'd say my high school football coach believed in me, um, and 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 just showed me, uh, as my dad did, but showed me, you know, what a what a great man looks like. And my dad hired him and knew that that Coach Jones, Phil Jones, would do this for the kid, the boys that played for him. And uh, he had a huge impact in my life. Coach Phil Jones, fantastic man. That's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. It, it, it's, it's so cool to hear the impact that uh, people have on uh, on our lives. And that's it's cool. Um, what a neat neat thing. Th- thank you for sharing about your father and about, and about uh, Coach Jones. I, I like that. Uh, yeah. Dale, can't thank you enough for talking with us today. Uh, um, I want to remind everybody that we'll have the uh, the links to go uh, to connect with uh, Dale or to find out more about the Million Dollar Wagon or to learn more about the, the talk about money. And uh, um, I hope you'll take time to do that. And uh, thank you all for joining us. And uh, Dale, wishing you the best in all you do. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Thank you, everybody. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is excited to be a member of Voice Ed Radio. Voice Ed Radio, your voice is right. Here. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. The opinions expressed on Teaching Learning Leading K-12 are those of the guests and hosts. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is intended to share ideas, advice, and suggestions for classroom teachers and school administrators. Teaching Learning Leading K-12 is produced for educational purposes. Thanks for listening, and I hope you'll share it with your friends.